Now, do you remember, I told you in this book we have activities, right? So do you see our first activity is under getting ready for the lecture. So in this section, getting ready for the lecture, we have activity one, discussing music and movement. Where's activity two? Can you find it? Listening Where's activity? Listening to, different listening to different kinds of music. So where's activity three? Next page. What is that called? Studying, studying. studying. syllables. OK. And where do we have activity four? Identifying syllables and word stress. And activity five? Taking dictation. Now, some students get mixed up between talking and taking. So talking and taking. How is the spelling different? In taking, how do we spell it? T-A-K-I-N-G. And talking is T-A-L-K-I-N-G. And the L is silent. It's, we don't speak it. We have to write it because it changes the vowel sound of the letter A. So we don't say taking. We say aw, aw, talk. Like we say cha, cha, chalk, like the chalkboard. And we say walk. walk. Okay, so we have a lot of A-L spellings where the L is silent. But it helps tell us how to pronounce the word. But sometimes when we read it, we skip over the L and we think, oh, taking, talking, taking, talking. Which one is it? So. If I read the sentences, I give dictation. And if you write the sentences, then you take dictation. Okay? So the person who speaks gives the dictation, and the person who writes it down takes the dictation. All right? Giving and taking. Yeah, those are opposites, right? I give you money, you take it. <laughs> okay. How many activities are there? In this chapter, the whole chapter one, tell me the answer. Flip through the chapter. Tell me how many you find. How many? You go through the whole chapter. Tell me if you can find the number of activities. 30. 30. In the whole chapter. 19. Well, Not 19. enough. 19. Keep going. 34. 34. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, I think some of you stopped at part one. Part two. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, if you go all the way to page 37, that's the last page of chapter one, and you'll see the activity. 34. Act 30, 34 is the last activity in every chapter will look something like this. It's called summarizing your progress. Now, you remember that we have three parts of the chapter. One focuses on listening, another one focuses on speaking, and the third one is about assessing your listening and speaking. What does it mean to assess? Assess, A-S-S-E. E -S -S, assess, assessing your listening and speaking skills. Do you know that meaning? Watch. Watching it? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, is it again? Watch. I'm sorry, I don't know the word. Do you know how to spell it? It's a, like measuring, measuring your progress. Evaluating your progress. So when we assess you, it's like we test you. We test or we measure and we evaluate your progress. Okay. So this is an important word because all throughout your learning, no matter what you learn, you want to be able to assess where you are. You assess where you are at the beginning. You assess where you are at the end or at a certain point so you know where you're starting and where you're going. And how far you have to get to your goal, right? So assessment is very important aspect of learning anything. So this is the word assess. And the verb assess, ing form assessing, the noun is assessment, assessment. Okay, have you heard this word? So it's evaluation, it's like a measurement. You get a test of some sort 
and then you maybe you get a grade, or maybe you get, oh, this is very good, and this is very weak, and this one is so-so, that's your assessment. So in the end, you also get a chance to assess yourself to see, do I feel like I have met the objectives for this chapter? And the objectives, you'll remember, are always on the first page of the chapter, right? Okay. Now, your homework is going to be from, chat, from activities one through five, and I'm going to show you how to get started, all right? So if you please look at activity one, if you look at activity one, you'll see this one is called um, Discussing Music and Movement, all right? Now, it says, in a small group of three or four students, look at the illustrations, discuss the questions with your partners, and make notes. Now, we're not going to do the partner part tonight. We will do that on Thursday. But we're going to do the first one together so I can teach you how to do it. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. And then when you know how to do it, you'll make preparation. You'll make your notes. And then you'll be ready to discuss it when you come back on Thursday. Is that a good idea? Yes. Okay. So I want to make sure that I can teach you how to learn. And that might not, I don't want you to feel, oh, I don't know what to do. But if you feel that way, you always ask me, okay? Never feel afraid to ask me. Some teachers, maybe they don't like ask questions. I love it when you ask questions. To me, when you ask questions, it shows me you want to know. It shows me you want to learn. It shows me you're curious and you want more information. And I'm happy to give it to you. So never be afraid to ask me in class, after class, in my office, online, on the telephone, anytime. OK? Promise? All right. OK, so in this part, we need to describe the person or people in the pictures. And we need to discuss where are they, the place. We want to find out what kinds of music or musical instrument are they playing. What kind or kinds of movements are they making? And we're going to put a check by the scenes that you think are interesting and then share your observations with your classmates. Do you know the word observations? The things that you observe. What does it mean? How do you observe something? Yes, you look at it. And you look at it carefully. You focus on it. Usually when we observe things, we use our eyes. But we can also use other parts of our body to observe. What other senses do we use to observe? Yes. Hear. We hear. hear things, hear. right? You can observe by looking. You can observe by yeah. hearing, yeah. right? You can observe by Touching. feeling things. You can observe an earthquake by feeling it, yeah. right? You know what I mean? So we have a lot of different ways of observing. If you're in the field of culinary art, we have culinary skills at our college. Then how else do you observe your food? Smell. Smell and taste it. In my class, I'm sorry, we are not going to do that. <laughs> but those are different ways to observe. So the, the, probably the main way we'll observe in our class is by listening and, and then by looking. Yeah? OK. Um, so let's look at, uh, there are four pictures all together, right? You see that there are four pictures, and they are lettered A, B, C, and D. OK, let's look at picture A together and talk about it so we get an idea of how we should take notes. So um, there are four categories, person, place, music, and movement. So actually, the first one shouldn't be person. It should be people. Yeah, yeah let's strike that out. Cross that out and write people. There's more than one person in that one. So if we write people, how can we describe the people in the picture? What are some words that we can use to describe the people in this picture? Marching. marching, OK. The people are marching, OK. What else can you use to describe the people? Can you, when I ask you to describe someone, what, what, what ways do you use to describe a person? They use the uniform. Okay, uniform. Very good. They're wearing uniforms. That's very descriptive. They're all wearing same uniform. All right. They're wearing the same uniform. What else? They're playing instruments. Good. Okay. What can you say about the place? Where are they? 
the street. They're in the street. Okay, why are they in the street? Parade. Baby, it's a parade. Good. Use your vocabulary. If you know the word parade, how do you spell parade? P A R A D E. Parade. They're in the street at a parade. Write that down. Okay? Write that down. That's the place. Yes? Parade. P A R A D E. Pronounce parade. Parade. Yes. Okay, good. Music or instrument. What can you see? What can you describe? Do you see? Are they playing the guitar? Piano? Bass? Flautas. Yes. And how do you say that in English? We say flute. Flutes. Right. They're playing, they're playing flutes. How do you spell flutes? F L U T E S. Flutes. Flutes. They're playing flutes. Good. They're playing flutes. Do any of you have a flute? Have you seen a flute? Have you heard a flute? Yeah. A, okay, a bamboo one. Right. Okay, I don't think these are bamboo though. They look uh, like they are brass instruments here. Okay, what about movement? Do you see any movement? Want any action? Okay, then give me some verbs. When we talk about movement, we need to use verbs, not nouns. So give me some verbs. Marching. Marching. How do you spell marching? M-A-R-C-H-I-N-G. They are marching. Okay. They are marching and playing flutes. Okay. So that's the movement that you see in this picture. Got it? So these are the kinds of notes that you need to write for each of the pictures. Understand? Okay, can you do that? Good. Let's go to page three. Look at the box that says music appreciation classes. All right, let's try to say this word. It has a lot of syllables. Appreciation. Appreciation. Good, watch me, watch me. Appreciation. Appreciation. Five syllables. Appreciation. 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 Five syllables. Stress the fourth one. Okay? Now, how about music? How many syllables here? Music. Two syllables. Where's the stress? Music. Two syllables stress the first syllable. Two, one. Okay. Music appreciation classes. Music appreciation classes. Very nice. Okay. Listen. In a music appreciation class, students listen to different kinds or genres of music. They learn to identify and appreciate them. Your instructor may present examples of music in class or may ask you to study examples in the library or on the web. Do you see a footnote? Yes. Yes, yes next yeah. to the word genres. This word is a French word. It's not an English word. It is an English word, but we borrowed it from French. And we pronounce it in English like this, genre. 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 So if we look at the, the N, we know it's a noun. It's a specific type of literature, art, or music grouped according to a style or subject. For example, classical music is one genre. Jazz music is another genre. Hip-hop music is another genre. Salsa is another genre. So those are different genres of music, types or kinds of music. Okay? When we talk about art and music and literature, we use the word genre to mean different styles. On, uh, in activity two, you can see four pictures. Mm -hmm. Classical with a woman playing the... Uh, violin. Watch me. Violin. 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 Beautiful! <laughs> Violin. Violin. Three syllables, stress the third. 
And in the second one, you see country, a man in a cowboy hat is playing a Guitar. Watch me. Guitar. 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 Two syllables. Stress the second. Two, two. And in the third picture, you see a guy singing very loudly in the mic with big drums behind him playing rock. Rock music. And finally, you see a picture of a man in a suit and a bow tie playing a saxophone. 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 Right, and that's an um, example of jazz. So I want you to think of any players that you know or composers that you know of these different genres. And then I want you to also think what other genres of music do you know about? I already gave you a few that are not on this list. What did I say? Do you remember? Salsa. I added no. salsa and hip hop. R&B. R&B. Good. Very good. Uh -huh. Write those down because we are going to find out how much you already know about music and what you can share on Thursday. Please look at page four. On page four, looking at languages, at the top you'll see the information about syllables. In speech, words are broken are spoken with syllables. Clap twice, and you make the sound of two syllables. Many English words have more than one syllable. For example, music has two syllables. Music, right? So if we clap twice, we get two beats and two syllables. Do you see this icon of a headphone here? That means that on your CD, you'll hear a track. You'll hear this on your CD, and you can practice without me because you'll have the voice on your CD. Okay. And you can listen and circle how many syllables you hear. On activity four, do you also see an icon? Mm -hmm. So this one is on the CD as well. And you'll listen to identify how many syllables and which syllable is stressed. For example, when I say music, you're going to write two because it has two syllables, dash one, because it's stressed on the first syllable. And this activity will give you practice identifying syllables and stress. Activity five is called taking dictation. Now the CD has dictation <coughs> of eight sentences, and they also give you a nice clue of how many words there are in each sentence. Now don't be worried if you don't get every word the first time. You shouldn't, because you will hear each sentence three times. First time, just listen and relax and try to understand the idea. The second time, you'll hear the sentence again with pause, so you have time to write. And the third time, you'll also hear pause, so you have time to check. All right? So write that down here in your book, and then we'll study some more of it when we get back to class on, uh, on Thursday. Remember to bring your mirror. mirror. Good. What else should you bring? <laughs> and your dictionary. Oh. I have written down the homework already in Angel. You can check it there. Basically, what I want you to do is to do the, the exercises one through five. And also, remember to go into Angel Mail, read my message, and then just type a short message back to me to prove to me that you know how to use it. And then um, bring all your, your study materials. We're on to Thursday.